we had the onstage X. We have our own private Chase Rice concert. He loves country. The ghostly return. Shut the front door. And the tears of Peter. And I've heard so many stories that like break my heart. This is your Bachelor season 24 episode four recap. Grab your glasses. It's time for Roses and Rosé. Hi, everybody. It's me, Lauren Zima. Can you find a rose? Does anybody see a rose? Where's Waldo's roses? I'm wearing a shirt entirely covered in roses. That's what I'm talking about, you guys. It's wonderful how many roses are on this shirt, and this was a wonderful episode of The Bachelor. A bit of a horror movie vibe to it. I'm going to get into that. I'll explain why. Also scary how many roses are on this shirt, so I could have gone either way with the pun. I had to make a game by decision. And let's get to it! Let's go! Ooh. Oh, it's the favorite part of my day. I have a different glass this week. We're trying all sorts of new glasses. This one's rose colored. So we're being also very literal. Roses and rose. You know what's kind of fun is you can't see how much I'm pouring in here. Ready to party! But the bottle is clear, so. I'm caught, just like Victoria. Was she? I don't know. We'll get into it. Ah! Which Victoria am I even talking about? So many options. Ooh! It was a good episode, wasn't it? What did you guys think of this app? Let me know in the comments below. I loved it. What? Ladies, it's time to pack up. Oh. Where are we going? Where are we going? And then Chris Harrison comes in with some news. We're going to Cleveland. In Cleveland, Ohio. So we are leaving the mansion and going to Cleveland. I really appreciated that this time around they didn't have the ladies fake that excitement. <laughs> you know, in the past, they'll be like, Wichita! And everyone's like, Wichita! And this time, they just kept it honest, you know? Cleveland. But drink every time someone's like, Cleveland? Ohio. When I think of Ohio, I don't necessarily think romance. Is there, like, some, like, hidden gems in Cleveland that we're not aware of? Mm. Uh -huh. Actually, right off the bat, great B-roll of Cleveland. It looked lovely. A cool sign. A bridge. A downtown. I'm looking forward to seeing my ladies. Speaking of things that are looking good, are we keeping tabs on Peter's scruff versus beard situation? I really had my eye on it this episode because last week Kelly told Peter straight up that she likes a scruff better than a beard. I'm more of the scruff kind of girl. Kelly the lawyer, I... <laughs> Do not object to that. I agree with you completely. And Peter really seems to be teetering, doesn't he? He's really walking the line. Is it scruff or is it a beard? Is it enough or is it too much? Is it a full face or is it a grizzly man? You know what I'm saying? But I think he's nailing it. Let me know in the comments below. Victoria F. So Victoria F is getting our first one-on-one -on -one, and Peter is going to take Victoria F flying. <gasps> no. Will he be flying in every episode? Doesn't Peter from his travels have any pilot friends in any of these cities? Maybe someone else could get into the cockpit for a moment. He could be in the back having a snack. You know, I just think, doesn't he want something to eat or drink on these dates? You're no, Dad. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Because they're additionally going to an amusement park and roller coasters are happening. By the way, don't drink every time Victoria F freaking loses her mind in this episode. She's losing her mind in the car before the plane. No, I can't. She's losing her mind on the plane. She's losing her mind on the roller coaster. <laughs> She's losing her mind at the concert. We're gonna get to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but they wind up alone in this diner, and it was honestly a little unsettling. They had the whole amusement park to themselves, which is cool, but then they're just alone in this diner, and it felt a bit like a horror film, didn't it? Even though I found that unsettling, though, what I found perhaps most disturbing was Victoria's toast. She made a toast to her and Peter's unborn sons. To our sons. Our daughter's not good enough. And to their successful dad, and hot mom. Hot moms. And, <laughs> and successful dad. Oh, Victoria. Can't you be successful too? You know? I had to ask myself the deep emotional question of the week. What are we cheersing to? You know, what are we celebrating? I will say they are looking at each other with a lot of connection, aren't they? Drink every time you saw Peter and Victoria looking deeply and passionately into each other's eyes. A lot of chemistry. I just can't wait to see your face. We won. 
Because you have no idea what's coming. Yes, then we see a very different type of look in Victoria's eyes as Peter tells her that they are now going to get a private concert. She loves country. And she's asking <gasps> who will be performing at this private concert. She's walking towards the stage and hearing the twang of country music slowly spilling out over the speakers. It's sounding a bit familiar, isn't it? As though she's perhaps met this person before. Her eyes are widening as she's saying who? <laughs> who, Peter? <laughs> who is playing for us? Peter, who will it be? And it is her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> What an episode! I really, I, cheers to the producers. That's worth cheersing to. Mm -hmm. And cheers to that cameraman who kept his camera locked in on Victoria's wide eyes and wet hair. She strolled through that sad, dark parking lot towards a fate that she didn't see coming and wouldn't want to accept. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm freaking out right now. Don't drink again because Victoria F. is really freaking out now. She says of her ex, Chase Rice, performing the concert for her and Peter, quote, nothing could be worse. Nothing could be worse. So Peter and Victoria come out to the concert and Chase Rice is there. What did you guys think of Chase's faces during all this? Did he know that he would be performing for Victoria and Peter? He told me he didn't want me to come to the show. Victoria did say later in the episode that she told Chase she was going on the show, but did he agree to perform before that? After? Did he know it would be a date with Victoria? Ha, <sighs> let me know in the comments below. Are you two having a good time tonight? And oh God, drink for every painful, painful thing that Peter unknowingly said. Like, oh, you know this song. Aww. You know this song. <laughs> She's like, I do. I do. <laughs> I know every word. It might even be about her. Ooh. This is the point in the show where you need a drink. <laughs> and cheers to more eye work, because then it's Victoria and Chase who are looking into each other's eyes as he sings. Victoria is looking like, oh God, what am I gonna do? And Victoria's just still dancing, still dancing, keep dancing. Peter doesn't know, keep dancing. And Chase is, ooh, I'm writing new lyrics in my head for what I'm gonna get out of this moment. And Peter's just like, yeah, <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> My forehead hurts. Oh God, and now Peter is talking to Chase Rice. Shouldn't y'all go on a date after that? Like now we'll go do like a dinner portion, kind of more serious. Like, when is someone going to tell Peter, <laughs> you know? When do you guys think Victoria should have told Peter? I think it should have been right when they walked out. Just say it right from that point, you know? Because now every moment they had together is going to ring false to Peter in retrospect. Because yeah, then it gets worse. Peter is exchanging numbers with Chase Rice. Two Bs, I one B. They're gonna be best friends. We're gonna be flying them in a plane soon, you know? <laughs> Peter and Chase Rice might be dating. I don't know. How's it going? Good. Now Victoria and Chase are talking and he's telling her he didn't know this was gonna happen. Did you not know that like, you had no idea? And she says she doesn't want it to be a thing. And Victoria, it's a thing if you make it. You should have told Peter. I'm like freaking out. And Victoria says she's freaking out. And it's like, girl, we know. You're always freaking out. Peter says that maybe Chase Rice could sing at him and Victoria's wedding. If things keep going like this. You know, we could have Chase Rice sing at our wedding. Mm -hmm. There you go. You never know. <laughs> Someone tell Peter. Hours later, it's hours later. Victoria and Peter are going to dinner and she is finally telling Peter. Chase and I used to date. And oh my God, his face. He's like. Peter's so confused. He's like, Chase? Like the singer Chase? The singer Chase? The guy that was doing the concert. The guy at the concert? Yeah. The one on stage. Wait, what? The man singing? That Chase. I mean, of course Peter's confused. He exchanged numbers with Chase. They told each other their life stories. They figured out 10 friends they have in common and he was going to sing at Peter's wedding, Victoria. There you go, you never know. <laughs> Should have told him sooner, you know. Yeah. Peter even says, no. No. Mm -hmm. Like his person is rejecting this information, you know? I think that we actually witnessed something wild. I believe we saw the moment that Peter realized he was on this show. He says, this is so freaking weird. Like when, do you, when do you like just dance and make out to someone else's ex singing to you? 
Yeah. On The Bachelor, Peter. Yeah. You're on the show. <laughs> and you're the lead. Yeah. At the same time, I was like, I didn't want to ruin the moment because I knew that you were so happy. So again, Victoria is freaking out and she leaves and then we are back in the Hilton of Cleveland. And McKenna. And we find out Kelsey's getting a one-on-one -on -one, and I did not expect that. Did you? Let me know in the comments below. I like it, surprises. McKenna is upset that she didn't get the date, but I think that Peter's putting McKenna on the back burner a little bit because he knows that he likes her, don't you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm not mad at you for anything. You didn't do anything. So back to Victoria and Peter, and Peter is actually all good with this. I do think Peter understands now that he's on this reality show, and so is she, and that on this unparalleled reality show that I love so much, people get put into dramatic situations. I'm sorry. So he forgives Victoria. Did you think he should have? I thought it was great, and Victoria was honest with him. She just could have been a little more honest a little sooner. So then they're making out and their connection really felt real to me. What did you guys think? I think now Victoria F is an F for front runner. I'm liking this season because we're getting new front runners every episode. Oh, it's tricky. Mm -hmm. Like, can we just laugh at it? Can we? Like, why, why? It's why, weird, why, right? Why, it's weird, but what the hell? Like, Oh my God, I've always liked Peter, but I really fell for him on this episode, you guys. He says, let's just laugh it off, you know? I mean, Peter is a nice guy, he's mature, he's successful, he's very positive, and he can have a laugh. I think Peter's a real catch. Victoria? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will you not run in a corner this time? <laughs> and accept this rose? Yes. Anyway, Victoria F gets a rose and one more concert. <laughs> That cellist isn't one of her exes, right? And then I've got a drink because we're on to the group date and Peter says he's so excited to share. Share with the ladies what I have planned for today. Then it is sports. Woo! Are you ready for some football? This is Josh Cribbs. This guy is a legend. As we do on every one of these dates, they've brought in some athletes that we don't know, and we're gonna cheer, and we're gonna clap for them. At least we were honest about our reaction to Cleveland, but we're not gonna be honest about our reaction to these athletes that we don't recognize. You know, I always think if I was standing there, what would be going through my head? Is there a snack bar here? I wonder if they have wine. Maybe it's that individual-sized wine where you get kind of a whole small bottle for yourself. Where is the wine? Luckily, someone's into this. Tammy says she loves contact sports. I'm so freaking excited. I love football. I love contact sports. Oh, Tammy, what a champ. I really do like her. I'm gonna tackle a lot of bitches. I think she's paradise material. Mm, let me know in the comments below. If I'm being honest, I'm very terrified. Also, drink for every time McKenna doesn't catch the ball. Oh! Come on, McKenna. Oh! I felt that, McKenna. I'm with you. So anyway, I'm just gonna play it safe. You know what, cheers to Victoria P because she got out of it. She said she had a back injury. I'm not gonna do this today because of my back still. And she just fully sits out and not only that, then she gets one-on-one -on -one time and a massage with Peter. Well played, Victoria. Cause guys, this isn't sports. This is a whole other game. I miss you. About you. I didn't think I'm gonna stop thinking about you either. Peter, with his big statements, tells her he hasn't stopped thinking about her. Wow. I'm ABC Cleveland's John Doss, alongside radio host Morgan Wright. And, and then, oh, oh, ah, uh, someone else is announcing this game. Where is Chris Harrison? I did not like this at all. These people did not understand. And here we are. It is the Bachelor Bowl 2019. They were announcing the game like it's really a game, saying things like touchdown. Touchdown by the Eliminators. And winning. The Eliminators have retaken the lead. And other sports words. Sydney takes the snap. Chris Harrison knows how to announce a sporting event for Bachelor Nation. He gives us vague color commentary interspersed with clever jokes. Yeah, the animal is really taking it to the moon. Everybody understand? Let's go killer bees. This coach athlete man is like, does everybody understand? And I would have said, absolutely not. Okay, now it's the cocktail party. I think some stuff's gonna go down. Cheyenne is downing her drink. And I felt that. 
Okay. So, Peter, can I steal you for a second? Uh, Victoria P. steals Peter right away, and you know the women are not going to like that because Boo Boo sat out at that game, and she already had some alone time with Peter. You're the first one to take me away. I like to see that. Peter does like it. You guys, Peter likes bold women. We've learned that. He gave Hannah Ann the first impression rose on night one when she kept stealing him. He tells Victoria P. he likes this. He told me that he liked a forward woman in an interview. Shameless plug. <laughs> And then this horror movie of an episode continues, a ghost is here. Shut the front door. My. Wait, what? What is happening? There's a ghost in the room. Alea has arrived, though we didn't know this was happening because it was in the teaser last week for this week's episode, and I kind of wish they hadn't spoiled it, to be honest. Mind if I interrupt? But Peter didn't know, because look at his scruff-covered face. And then McKenna is trying to cast a spell with her hands to get rid of the ghost of Alea. What is happening? I'm here to freaking set the record straight about what was said about me. But Ghost Leia comes back with something to say. She says that Peter was manipulated. You kind of let yourself get manipulated. Do you agree? And Alea has even more to say. She says that Victoria P is lying about their level of friendship. I was in physical shock that she could even say that. That it was more than three hours, that it ran deep. Ooh. We've been friends. Since she was crying with Louisiana. Drink for every receipt that Alea had to say. Her and I planned a trip to Vegas together. What? We talked every day before leading up to this. Victoria P. Yes, Victoria Paul, yes. You can believe that or you can believe me, but I'm telling you that my truth is the truth. What did you guys think of what Victoria P had to say to Peter? Uh, all of a sudden she's saying, yes, I went to Vegas with Alea. Like, you did go to Vegas, that's what she just told me. Yeah, we went to Vegas together and like hung out. She's saying she told him her truth, but her truth is changing, isn't it? Evolving. And that makes me question it. You know, let me know in the comments below. Peter, look at me. She's like, look at me, Peter. Look at me. No, like, look at me. Then she starts crying. Who do you believe? Oh, and drink for all the receipts. Now a woman whose name I just learned is Savannah is saying that Victoria P was saying horrible things about Alea in a closet. I know the things that she said in the closet. She's a terrible person and then Savannah. holding her hand during the rose ceremony. Everybody get out of the shadows, come into the light. And I wrote down, cut to a deep hug. What the Everyone is confused. Peter is confused. I'm confused. Everyone is confused. What is the relationship between Alea and Victoria P? I do think that they are two women who did pageants and that they were trained to speak vaguely when needed. So now when we require the truth out of them, it's very convoluted, it's very confusing. They're not really falling on one side or the other and I am over it. Knowing that we have, we have so many friends together, why is everyone touching each other? It's like we're all grasping for reality. Victoria P is reaching over to Alea's eye to remove something that's not there in an attempt to show how nice she is, how caring, how thoughtful. I don't believe it. I really turned on Victoria P all of a sudden, you guys. This is a roller coaster of an episode, just like that Cedar Point. <laughs> and we are in a nightmare. Alea, will you accept this rose? Because Peter gives her the rose. Is this a first for the show? Historians, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of this decision? It's a sequel. Alea is getting a Friday the 14th. But the internet knows everything. I will tell you all. Then we do what I really adore. We break the fourth wall. It happens on occasion. Alea said that she's been out there in the real world. I need you guys to catch me up on everything because I've only seen what Kelsey the internet has, it. has Kelsey seen. has a date tomorrow. Oh, I know. And she's seen what the internet has seen. And she tells everyone. Victoria F. had it yesterday. I know she was dating Chase Rice before the date. What? Oh, y'all don't know that. That Victoria F. was with Chase Rice. Then back to the light, it's Kelsey's one-on-one -on -one date with Peter. And we're still dancing in every episode. Hey. Is this a poker dance? Yeah. But this is perfect, isn't it? Because we said we were going to start doing a two-step tally, and Peter literally tells Kelsey he's going to teach her a two-step. Do a little discipline now, do a little two-step. They never stop dancing, they dance through the streets. The city of Cleveland has really turned it out with a variety of activities for Peter and Kelsey. Everybody go to Cleveland. Oh, they have food, they have racing. Is there wine? Guys, quick vlog, I'm back in my shades to say something I forgot, Kelsey. She gave us the iconic champagne moment, and then this week, she served maturity and groundedness. If you feel like you need to explore this more, I'd rather have you do that now. On her one-on-one -on -one date with Peter, Kelsey for Bachelorette. He took these off. But at night, oh thank God, we're on a boat! Fine.
finally I had to endure so many sports. Oh, oh, and I love Peter's outfit, a nice turtleneck with a very classic kind of a businessman coat. I adored this look. What did you think? I want to know all about you. So Kelsey is telling her story, and now I'm a Kelsey stan. <laughs> My opinion is changing a lot this season. Peter was really listening, which I loved. His best face of the night. Mm. And I've heard so many stories that like break my heart of what my mom and my grandma had to go through. Oh God, Peter is crying in his turtleneck. I love him. Ah. Crying about his mom, of course. She's the best. So we're gonna see her cry. Oh, let her go. Don't think about it, Lauren. It's too scary. Don't think about it. Mm. Drink for every sequel in this episode. Alea return and Kelsey gets the next chapter. You know, she gets the rose. What a turnaround. What a night at the movies. But sequels are always continuations of the original stories, and once again, the women are saying that Alea is full of crap. You're manipulative. How am I manipulative? You are not going to come in here after being sent the home. They say she's manipulative. She spread the story about Victoria F. and Chase. What did you guys think? Once again, I thought that Alea was being treated a little bit unfairly. She seems to have come back in, and she just mentioned the Victoria F. Chase thing. I don't think she knew that no one knew. A lot of drama, but I wrote down at least everyone sitting around drinking wine. And for us who went on the group date, who bust our ass out there on the football field and literally have the physical bruises to show. And oh, wow, now these women are really mad because they are telling Peter, Alea got that rose. And then walk in hand in hand with Alea. It was like the biggest slap in the face. Like I couldn't even look at you. And this is why I don't do sports. I bruise like a peach. Okay. okay. All right, go talk to her. I don't really want to talk to you right now, but I, I can, yeah. You don't want to talk? Uh, now Victoria is mad at Peter. I wrote down, I don't really know why. This felt like an overreaction to me. She doesn't want to talk, but she does. She doesn't want to sit. Want to take a seat? I can't sit. But she did. It read to me like she was just trying to exert some power over Peter and just get into a fight with him. It's ruining all of our time. I don't want to be in a relationship with someone that calls me a liar and then wants me back. God, these women are lampooning Peter at this point. We are in Saw 10. Sydney is mad at him because he doesn't know her middle name. You don't know what my middle name is. Sydney, calm down. Honestly, I mean, if that's your priority of concern, it doesn't matter. Use this time to talk to Peter instead of yelling at him. What did you guys think? Were they right to be angry about Peter using his time on Alea and other things, or did they just need to calm down? Like every horror movie, we are left on a to be continued. But of course we get a trailer for next week. And we are seeing a lot of sexuality. A lot of sexuality in the water. And speaking of water, Tammy crying? Now that's a horror movie. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you do to Tammy? I mean, she can do everything, that girl. She's giving us laughter, she's giving us sports, she's giving us sexy vibes, she's making out with Peter, but she's also playing the game. Oh, Tammy. Oh, guys, wow. The last thing I wrote down was, wow, wow, wow. Did you like this episode? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, I simply adore all of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your interaction with me. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I live tweet the episodes every Monday. And of course, check out Roses and Rosé on Entertainment Tonight's broadcast show every Tuesday night where we do a bit of a different show. I talk about other things, make new jokes, and we have special guests. <sighs> After all that scariness, I need a snuggle, and I'm gonna go to bed, and I'm gonna see a ghost. Good night, and bye!